Tova, our last chapter in the course. All right, so are the snow conditions, kind of appropriate, a, a factor in the number of visitors at a ski resort? The table below shows data that was collected. All right, so here we have a question. So um, you got a ski resort. Always a funny industry, isn't it? You ever thought about what it's like to operate a ski resort? I'm, I mean, some, did you work on one? So some seasons they just boom and do great. The snow is good and everything. And then some years they just do nothing. That must be a hard industry to kind of manage, would be my guess. I don't know. I never tried. But it just seems wild for them. It's all or nothing, kind of, it seems like. Anyway, so, um, so here's some information about how many visitors they have when the snow is hard packed. Um, that's not ideal, right? Versus when it's machine made because they, it hasn't snowed enough, you know. They have the machines out there. How many visitors, right? 14, 18, 19, 88, et cetera, et cetera. For, I don't know, this is over several weekends or something. And then if it's powder, that's the ideal, right? When it's nice powder and they have more people coming up to the ski resort to ski. So the question being put to us, does that make a difference? I mean, it sure seems like it probably would, but is there statistical evidence that it actually makes a difference according to this statistical evidence? Is this strong statistical evidence that the snow conditions are a factor in the number of visitors that come to the ski resort? Let's think about what statistical tool we could use to answer this question. Right down here, here's the HOH1. They've kind of given it <coughs> to us already, which is nice. They're saying um, the null hypothesis, like always, like all semester long, you know what the null is going to be. It's an, it's an equal sign, right? The null is equal. Can I, can I uh, pause for... So the null, like always, is equals, and the alternative... H1 is, you know, not equal. Somehow greater, less, not equal, whatever. In this case, they're saying, keeping it simple, at least two of the means differ from each other. That's really all we're testing. Is does, does the snow condition make a difference? You know, we're not really saying, hey, this one's bigger than that one, or this one's less than that one. You could do all that, but we're just keeping it real simple. We're just saying, hey, does it, does it matter? You know, basically, are they all equal? Are they all really the same Same number of visitors come to the ski resort? If you have hard-packed snow versus machine-made snow, because it wasn't snowing very much, versus <coughs> nice soft powder. Do you end up, you know, is the number of visitors here on average for those weekends, is it about the same as the number of visitors when you have <coughs> machine-made snow? And, and is that also about the same number of visitors that you have on the weekends where it's the hard-packed snow? Are those all about the same? That's what the null says, right? Nulls always equals. So are those all about the same? Does that data end up being about the same? Or the alternative, they're not all the same. At least two of them are different, you know. So, uh, pretty normal kind of thing to test. Which, which tool will do that? Let's think back. This is good. We're moving towards the final. It's only a week from right now. We'll be taking the final. So it's a good time to kind of think over what we've done all semester. Um, what tool, bless you. What tool would, would do this? Yeah, could we do a... Yeah, we did some matrix stuff. Remember the matrix stuff where we put in the matrix? Anybody see any problems with trying to put this in as a big matrix? Yeah, there's some holes here. No, normally they never had any gaps. I guess we could put in zeros or... I don't know what we could do there. But if you look back on... You guys have your exam. You're about to take exam four. So it's right fresh in your mind. The matrix ones is always what kind of test? Do you remember? When do we use the matrix? Independence. independence. Good catch. The, that's always a test for independence. And if you and you know how you're going to recognize that on today's test? If I hand you exam, when, when I hand you exam four here in a few, in a few minutes, uh, you'll recognize independence test because they'll say the word independence. <laughs> right? that's, that's what you're looking for. Right, So if they say the word independence, or, that's right, there was another way, huh? What was it? Homogeneity? Same thing. No, they're, they're going to say independence. I'll just let you in on 
my secret. I like to just use the word straight and not surprise you. So if it says the word independence, then you know it's going to be that big matrix thing. This doesn't say the word independence, does it? We're not really testing for independence on this one. So we can't put it in as a matrix. What's, what's different about this question from what we did in the past? Like, what if, we, what if we didn't have the powder, let's say, and we just had hard-packed and machine-made snow? We're just comparing those two kinds of snow. Do we have a, a tool that would handle it? Yeah, that was, um, I don't know what you call it, that was um, two groups, basically, right? We had all, all kinds of tests for two, two independent or, or matched pair. It'd be two independent, wouldn't it? Two independent, in, I can't talk and spell independent. Two independent samples, and we could totally handle it with two independent samples, right? You're going to do that on tonight's test, right? I'm going to hand you some, and there's going to be two independent samples on one, and there's going to be a matched pair on the other. How are you going to recognize matched pair? They're matched up somewhere like, yeah, before and after, husband, wife, um, actor, actress, somehow they're matched, huh? So anyway, you'll have a couple of two sample problems on tonight's test, either two separate groups or two matched pairs. But the problem is here we, we don't just have two. We have three. So, do you, so, so I, I did all that to say, do you see what's new here? Why we need one last new tool. We can't do two independent samples because we got three. That's what's new about this one. Do you see what's new? There's three groups. Not just two. We've got all kinds of tools if they only give us two groups. And that's how you're going to recognize this a week from today. There'll be, um, like I was saying, 25 to 30 questions on the final. I don't remember exactly. It might be t I don't remember. Somewhere between 25 and 30. And uh, one of them, there'll only be one, that'll be this chapter. There'll just be one. And how are you going to recognize it? There'll be three or more groups. That's the new thing. Like, how do you test something when there's more than two? when there's three or more. That's the new thing tonight. And what you do is, you write it up here, when there's three or more, three or more groups, you have to use ANOVA. <laughs> See, I can't talk and spell. ANOVA. ANOVA stands for Analysis of variance. I'm not going to quiz you on that. We just call it ANOVA. Analysis of variance. And what it's for is when you have three or more groups. So that's what you'll have to recognize because it won't say, hint, this is ANOVA. That's going to be the hard thing about the final, huh? That's why I made you the practice final and we're going to go over it on Wednesday night. So yeah, the hard thing about the final is recognition. So you'll recognize this one, three or more groups. You think, all right, it's ANOVA. And it's really pretty simple. Once you see that, this will be a piece of cake. All you're going to do is uh, to carry out ANOVA is put this in L1, put this in L2, put this in L3. So just grab your calculator, put it down the L1, L2, L3, and when you're all done, go to the test. It's the bottom one on the list. We've, like, covered it now. Tonight, I mean, I, I hope you feel like you got your money's worth out of that calculator. If you go to the test, it's the very last one on the list. We have done it. I mean, we might have skipped one along the way or something. But we basically covered it. You go down to ANOVA. You'll see it at the very bottom of the list. You put in L1, L2, L3 with commas. You've got to put the commas in between. Um, and then just hit enter. And it'll crank out everything you need. So let's do that. So yeah, so, um, so put in L1, L2, L3 and crank it out. I'm getting a test. Now the test statistic is the F. Which is kind of new, kind of different. It's F equals, how many decimals are there? Three. Um, that's going to be 5.228. Y'all getting that okay? That number coming up for you? And then the P value is more important, like always. Four decimals is 0 0.01339. Anybody else get that? So, um... Okay, so then we just draw, and it's the same kind of conclusion that you're used to. So is that p-value? My p-value is really low. Um, oh, but they said 01, so it's not low enough. Oh, no, no, 0 0.10, 0 0.10. That's, that's different. I better look closely. Yeah, my p-value is way below 0 0.10.
Yeah, the, the significance... The significance level is 0.10, so 0.01 is way below 0.10. So my P is low, so you know what that means. HO must go away. Now, what is HO? Always, all semester long, it's equals. So we cross out the HO. Oh, and, by, and like always, that's weak evidence, huh? So the HO is the weak, but we cross that out. And we keep H1, and H1 is there's always strong evidence if you go to H1. So there's strong evidence that at least two of the averages, the means, are different. In other words, the snow type makes a difference. Of course it does, huh? Right? People like to come when there's powder more than machine-made snow or hard pack. So, yeah, so, so our conclusion is, yes, there's statistical evidence that there's a difference in the number of visitors, the average number of visitors, depending on the snow type. So, um, based on this, we should, re we rejected, didn't we? Reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence for it to claim that snow condition is a factor in the number, there it is. It's just that first, first option there. Was there more in that? Yeah, there it is. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. That's it. There's nothing else new here. I think the main thing is recognition. Just spotting it, you know, on the final. Three groups or more. Do the A Nova thing. Notice it's kind of a weird thing. We're not actually able to conclude which one's best. I mean, we know probably powder is going to be the highest, huh? But, but the A Nova test just says, are they the same or are they different? That's all it says. And so our conclusion is, yeah, they're different. They're not all the same. You actually need fancier ANOVA tests. There's two-way ANOVA when you figure out like which one's higher and lower for which characteristics, and we're not going there. This is just an introductory statistics course, so you would do that kind of thing. You know, If you're going to go to grad school in sociology or criminology or psychology or something like that, you'll probably, you'll almost definitely take a higher-level stats class where you'll get more specified. This is the end of introductory stats right here. We just do this. One test, this is, now we can test more than two groups, but all we can determine is, are they all the same or not? And we say not on this one. Make sense? Easy? I might just skip the other ones. Let me see. Yeah, that's the same thing. There's four groups. Just put it in your calculator. Do a NOVA. Hit the buttons. Number three, same thing. Hybrid, online, face-to-face. -face. Which one helps people do better? In an online, in a math, in a math class, statistics class, and a hospital, is it better to which which treatment is better? Sent home with medicine, a few hours in the hospital or overnight? You know how do people do? And that's it. It's just four questions, mm -hmm. and they're all like that. And I'm going to go to the other thing. Yeah, I think that's any any other questions on these? They're all really the same thing.